I was on Facebook, of course, looking at boxing, and I came across a post. And this post was about Javante Davis, Devin Haney, and Shakur Stevenson. Now, this post was basically talking about if these three fighter loses, the LDBC, aka black boxing fans, will lose our minds, right? And I say ours because I'm black, right? So the person that posted this was bold enough to post something like that because he was directing that post towards black boxing fans. And he pretty much said, you know, we're, we're going to go crazy, right? And he's, you, he used the, the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight as a way to validate what he was saying about black boxing fans. Now, with that Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight, and I'm talking about the second fight, after Deontay Wilder lost to Tyson Fury, nobody talked about Glovegate until about a week later. And it took someone from Canada to leak out a video on Tyson Fury's gloves. And when that hit the surface, all hell broke loose. But right after Tyson Fury defeated Deontay Wilder, for about a whole week, nobody said a word. Nobody was up in the uproar. Nobody was speaking out. Nobody said a word. I'm talking about black boxing fans, black fans that support Deontay Wilder. Nobody said a word. If I can remember correctly, BFTV that same day gave Tyson Fury a ton of credit. Nobody said a word. Let me say that one more time. That night, that, that infamous Saturday night, Tyson Fury knocks out Deontay Wilder in the seventh round. No black boxing fans complained that night. It took a whole week, a whole week for someone to find out that something was wrong with Tyson Fury's gloves. And when that footage was leaked out from a person that lives in Canada, again, all hell broke loose. So when you guys say that black boxing fans are going to lose you know, their minds if a black fighter like a Javante Davis, Shakur, Devin, Charlos, uh, you know, any black fighter that we support, right? You guys say that we're going to lose our minds if one of those fighters lose. And you're wrong. If they were to lose, so what? Black American boxing fans don't have to sit around and wait 10 plus years for one of ours to merge. We don't know what that feels like. We never experienced that. Because when it comes to boxing in America, there's a great talent flow. A great talent flow. And I'm talking about with black American fighters. There's always going to be a next man up when it comes to black American fighters. We don't have to wait around for one of ours to make an impact in the sport of boxing. We don't have to wait around for that. So if one of our fighters that we support loses, oh well. It's not the end of the talent flow. You see, the black talent flow flows like water flowing through a water hose. It never stops. So if one of ours get knocked off, then there's another one that's going to reach to the top. That's how good the talent flow in America is. Okay? So if Deontay Wilder got knocked off, look who's on top now. Javante Davis. If Javante Davis gets knocked off, Devin Haney. If Devin Haney gets knocked off, Shakur Stevenson. And, it, and, and, and the list goes on and on and on. It will never stop. So if, again, if one of ours takes an L, oh, well. And let me say something about that, taking a loss. You know, this is, this is why I was mad at Showbiz one day when he made a video about how it's okay for a fighter to take a loss. It is not okay for certain fighters to take losses. It's okay for non-black fighters to take losses. That applies to them. But when it comes to a black fighter, it is not okay for them to take losses. They're held to a different standard. Adrian Broner, for an example. Adrian Broner lost to Marcus Madonna. Instead of people acknowledging Adrian Broner daring to be great, he got disrespected for losing to Marcus Madonna. And Marcus Madonna was a welterweight at that time. Broner just jumped up to that weight class, right? Broner felt that he was too good for the guys around his natural weight class, so he jumped up two weight classes and he lost to Marcus McDonough and he got laughed at. And when you look at Adrian Broner today, 
Adrian Broner is still a not a welterweight. He's still considered too small for the welterweight division. He's not even full flesh Walter. We're, we're talking about an Adrian Broner 12 years later. This man's not even a full flesh welterweight. He's still too small in 2023 for the welterweight division. But yeah, he fought Marcus Madonna at welterweight in 2013 and he lost to Marcus Madonna. But people don't acknowledge Adrian Broner for losing to a fighter that was clearly one of the best fighters at that time at the welterweight division. Nobody told Adrian Broner, hey, it was okay for you to lose to Marcus Madonna because you dared to be great. No, Adrian Broner got laughed at and he still gets laughed at to this day. So it's not okay for certain fighters to take losses because of the criticism that comes with that certain fighter losing. And this is why, you know, when it comes to black American fighters, they are, they are being pushed in the direction to where they can lose, right? They're, they're like Jamal Charlo, you know, let's just say if I make a video demanding for Jaime Magia to fight David Benavidez, have y'all wonder why nobody ever pushed those two guys to fight each other? And I'm sure, you know, Jaime Magia fans will say that Jaime Magia is too small. David Benavidez is a 168 pounder, right? They'll, 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 they'll make that excuse for Jaime Magia. But Jamal Charlo's also a middleweight. He's also a middleweight. But he needs to fight David Benavidez. Why? Because David Benavidez gives most of these people that hate Jamal Charlo hope that Jamal Charlo will suffer his first defeat. That's why people are pushing Jamal towards David Benavidez because they believe in David Benavidez, right? They believe in him. They think that he has a, a strong chance of beating Jamal Charlo. But when you apply that same energy to someone like Jaime Magia, oh, then we're going to hear about weight classes. Then we're going to hear about, no, Jaime Magia isn't ready. He's 25 and he's still training or he's 25 and he's still being groomed, right? He needs to... He needs to fight at 160 for a while and then consider it moving up, right? You'll hear all that nonsense. But when it comes to Jamal, a guy that's also a middleweight, he needs to fight David Benavidez. So that that notion about, you know, you know, it's it, it being okay for fighters to take L's don't apply for black fighters because black fighters are always pushed in the direction to where they can actually lose. Right? And, and 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 again, when it comes to, like I said, someone like a Devin, America forced Devin Haney out of this country to fight in Australia because they were hoping that at least Australia will rob Devin on the scorecards. That's why they wanted Devin to travel. And this is why you see a lot of conversation about black American fighters needed to travel um, and, and, and fight, you know, all across the world. Right. Because they understand that. Wherever the wherever the American fighter goes to fight, they will not be favored by the judges because the, there's always supposedly hometown cooking, right? So they, they they kick these American fighters, these black American fighters, out of America, hoping that they'll get robbed on scorecards. And this is why Floyd Mayweather is criticized so much because he made a living fighting in America, right? He didn't travel. He didn't travel across the world, which don't make any sense at all. But Th that's why they wanted Floyd Mayweather to, to travel because they were banking on, they were hoping that, you know, if, if, if at least Floyd can get robbed on the scorecards, they were, they were willing to be okay with, with, with Floyd Mayweather being robbed on the scorecards. All right. So again, like I said, man, this whole, you know, this whole notion about, you know, you know, it being okay for fighters to take L's that doesn't apply for black American fighters, right? Black American fighters need to be at the A game all the time. Javante Davis, I mean, all from, from Javante and, and, and down, all black American fighters need to be at their best all the time. They cannot take shortcuts. And better yet, they can learn from Adrian Broner because Adrian Broner is, is the master of taking shortcuts. So, um, yeah, like I said, you know, you know, going back to the talent flow in America, you know, um, there, 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 there is no shortage of talent when it comes to black fighters in America. So, you know, this person that posted that crap about, you know, black boxing fans on Facebook, you know, um, you know, being emotional whenever, you know, one of ours loses, it, it's not true because the whole, the whole, 
you know, situation with Deontay Wilder was the first time boxing fans experienced that from black American boxing fans, right? And again, that didn't happen right after Deontay Wilder lost. That happened a week later. And it took a video from someone in Canada uh, for us to actually speak out against what we saw. And what we saw was clear cut cheating. That's why we spoke out. We didn't speak out because Deontay Wilder lost. We spoke out because we saw someone cheating. So again, if Devin loses, oh well. If Shakur loses, oh well. If Tank loses, oh well. It still does not stop the talent flow in America. There will always be a next man up. 